Okay, this is Chris Goldthorpe with ChrisChess.com and HollywoodChessTutoring.com and this video is going to be about how to think during your game because there are definitely different modes of thinking for different skill levels and different types of situations. Um, so we're kind of stepping through a game here, but if you are very new to chess, be aware that some of your pieces are blocked. For example, this bishop cannot go to this square right now because the pawn's in the way. But when this pawn moves, then there may suddenly be a threat here. For example, if black has something on this g5 square that's not guarded, then the moment this pawn moves, it creates a threat here. Uh, or if a pawn has already moved, now this bishop can see these squares. All of these. So it's something worth being aware of in advance. Now, it doesn't take a lot of experience before that becomes automatic. But when you're brand new, you, you have to force yourself to constantly look at where all of your pieces can go on the next move. Um, just a moderately experienced player forgets how much they're doing automatically just by glancing around the board, which is a good thing to do. Just general awareness. Okay. Now they've started with good moves. Both players have made a first move that's a good move. Uh, in beginner chess, these moves are extremely common, uh, but they lead to an open center. What I mean by that is we have open files. What do I mean by open files? An open file is one of these vertical columns. This is the E file where there are no pawns. If one or two such files exist between D and E, then we have a very open center. And what that means for strategy is that it becomes very important to get a new piece out on every single move. So with these pawns both blocking each other and being in an important effective central position and being unprotected. So we have three things. They're in a good position, but they're Im immobile and unprotected. So they won't last. They tend to get traded off and we tend to have an open center. So it provides for a lot of tactics. What I mean by tactics are situations where there is a short-term opportunity, something that if you don't do it now, you might not get the chance later. Something very particular to the specific game of chess. So now the queen can come out here and the bishop can come out here. So if you're a beginner, you need to constantly try to figure out, well, what would you do if you had two or three moves in a row? It does not mean that that's what you should try to do because you don't have two or three moves in a row, but um, you want to anticipate, that is think about before it happens, threats. Threats are things that you could do to the other person that they don't want, like to capture their pieces or checkmate their king. Your opponent can make threats against you too. What you don't want to happen is for a threat to come where you had not anticipated it because then you may not have a way to uh, deal with the threat effectively. For instance, let's say they trap your queen. If you didn't anticipate that they were gonna threaten your queen in a way where your queen couldn't get away, then it might already be too late when they do. So in this game, white gets another piece out. We call knights and bishops minor pieces. It is very important to get all four minor pieces. You've got four minor pieces, two bishops and two knights. You need to get them all out right away. 
off the bat, especially in these E4, E5 openings, because we're going to have an open center for the reasons I just mentioned. Now, those of you who have a little bit of experience, not only would you automatically notice the threat that this knight moves makes, but you would have anticipated it. You would have known before black did this, that if black did this, you would be able to go here and now white is threatening to capture this pawn for free. So, logical is for black to make an equally big threat, such as to attack your pawn, or to guard his. So if you didn't know any better, a move like this might appear logical. You know, pawn, pawn's guarding this one. And this is where experience and knowledge would make the difference. But if you were a beginner, this is um, a logical move so far as you know. It's not actually good because of this move. We might cover that in another video, but be aware that in the opening, it can be very complicated because there are many pieces and a lot of them have not committed themselves to where they're gonna go yet. In fact, the more minor pieces come out into this central area and the more captures are available, whether they seem like good choices or not, the more complicated it becomes. The more complicated it is, the more time you need to spend on it. But the one thing that's important to do all through the game, and I have a video called Chess Safety, is that every time it becomes your move, so for black, that would apply to him right now, they should think not of what move that they are going to make, but they should imagine that it is their opponent's turn, as if their opponent is going to get to move twice in a row, as if they're going to lose their turn. So black should think, if I were the white pieces, what would I do? Now, if you're, if you're a 600 rated player, you can't expect yourself to try to see, you know, six moves ahead and say, well, if he takes this, can I go here with the queen and win the pawn back? What if he goes up here to guard it? Uh, then I attack it again. Uh, then he checks me maybe. Uh, no, that doesn't work because he plays c6. And, and if you're a 600 rated player, you're probably already getting lost. Um, in the first few moves of the game, it's very useful. And by the first few, I mean maybe the first even just three or four moves. As long as your opponent makes normal moves, moves that you see uh, often, and if you haven't played even 20 games yet, you might not be clear what I'm talking about. But the move positions that happen again and again, like this one, you'll see this position as white or black. I mean, if you play this opening as white and this as black, you're going to see this often. As long as you're in a normal position, for at least the first three or four moves, you should have decided before the game even began how you were going to start. If you don't have a trainer, at least somebody should have advised you and you should have made some choices as to what moves you're going to make. If you're in a very normal position, um, it's kind of silly for you to be having to think every time you get to this position. If you're black and you answer E4 with E5, you should already know what you're going to do at this stage of the game. And that's why I would call it the opening. So black goes here. Um, it's not an opening that I would recommend for beginners, but it is a, a real move. Black counterattacks. He attacks white's pawn. So white captures the pawn. Now a common mistake here for black, which is a logical choice. It's something where you would need um, knowledge and experience to know better, but if you didn't have that knowledge and experience, black should be very careful about copying white's moves because remember, white moves first each time. 
So the move black makes is probably better than taking this pawn, even though it also loses a pawn. Uh, this gambit is dangerous if black is familiar with it, dangerous to white, um, even though white's going to stay a pawn ahead now if he takes the knight. So black has let his bishop loose here. And if you're a beginning player, you should have anticipated the fact that when this pawn moves, whether it moved forward or to the side, it's going to have access to these squares. And on some of these squares, it can attack white's pieces. Um, it's also good to be aware of squares where you have more than one piece, like this knight also sees this square. So at this stage of the game, if you're the white pieces, if you never saw this before, even if you know your opponent's not very good, you know that he's got a lot of pieces out buzzing around. He's got his knight out, your pawn is unguarded, both of his bishops are free. So white is a pawn ahead, but his king is more valuable than his pawn. This is not a good move. It is a logical move. Now, you'll hear me say that time and time again, that a move is logical, but it's not best. What could be logical about a move that's not best? I mean, wouldn't it be more logical to play the best move? Sure, if you know what it is. But at least this move is, is motivated by tactical awareness. White realized that his pawn was in jeopardy, that black was able to capture it and didn't see any way to guard it for free. So he made a move that he's guarding the pawn. And now if the knight were to take the pawn, he would take uh, the knight with his bishop. And now even though he only saw one move ahead, if you're 600 rated, you want to at least see one full move ahead. It's better than just making moves where you give away a piece for free. And you'll see a lot of that. Now, if you're 1200 here, you should know not to bury your bishop like this and should have chosen a better move like D3 instead, you know, like this move. And then when he, go, when he brings his bishop out here, He's ready to do this. So you want to go here so that you can castle. And then when black goes here, um, then you take, and <clears throat> he goes here with his queen. Now, it takes some knowledge of this position, experience, having seen this before to anticipate this. Um, by tactical awareness, when somebody moves their piece, especially look, where can the piece go now that it couldn't go before? It's making a new threat. The queen's ready to capture this bishop. It's also ready to go here. So if white had anticipated moves that create a threat, he would have seen this move in advance. And if that was really a big problem for him, then uh, he might have done something different. So um, a, big, a big part of making it through the opening, besides knowing what move to make, which is helpful, um, but it's very time consuming because there are a lot of different openings. When you are new, you can't know every opening. Even masters don't try even to know every opening. They've chosen some that they play all the time. So let's uh, see what actually happened in the game. Now, if you're the black pieces, again, you look at checks and captures first. Anytime you're in a position that you don't know, especially 
If you think that you or your opponent or both of you have made errors, you need to calculate. And what that means is to visualize moves in advance. And it makes no sense to attempt to um, to analyze and consider every single legal move. I mean, there are a lot of moves that even the most beginning player knows are not worth even thinking about. For instance, for black to move his bishop here, and white just takes it for free with his knight, why would, why would you even think about that? You wouldn't. Um, it doesn't take a lot of knowledge or experience or intelligence to uh, not waste your time on moves like that. And likewise, you know your opponent is not going to be considering moves like that. It's, it's a waste of time to try to find some hidden value to such a preposterously and obviously terrible move. So um, it comes up, well, what moves should I think about? You can always forgive yourself for having overlooked a move that um, came up with subtle threats that you're not familiar with because some players are just stronger than you. They have more experience and they know stuff that you haven't seen before. They likely know about it because they were beaten by it at one time. But what you can do is you can anticipate moves that create threats especially a one move capture threat. And not all such moves are good, but beginners love to make any such move. Uh, this move unblocks the bishop and creates a threat at the same time. So black should be noticing this move, even if it's not a good move, but he should be prepared for it. If it were a good move that wins material, that is, captures more of black's pieces or higher value pieces than white's, then black would want to try to know about it before it happens. Both sides here in the beginning should be trying to get their pieces out. This is a piece of knowledge um, that you might get from experience alone, but no one ever does because everybody tells all beginners get your pieces out. We tend to intuitively um, sort of, you know, automatically, we, we recognize the value of pieces because we see ourselves doing things with them. But what people don't properly or completely appreciate is the value of getting a lot of pieces out quickly. And this makes it hard for white to get his queenside pieces out. Okay, this move doesn't do anything to get more pieces out. So if this move harmed black, uh, black should have realized it. Now, if white had some sneaky move here, you know, black might be like, well, you know, I didn't know about it. But if this turned out to be good for white, well, shame on black for not having noticed it. Now again, on every single turn, when your opponent first moves, you want to know what's an appropriate strategy. That means a plan for you. <laughs> but even more urgent is to see, is there a threat? This pawn is now able to go here, where it would be threatening to capture the pawn. Is that really a, a problem? Well, what if I capture it? Well, then he can capture this. I mean, the bishop is guarding this along with the queen, but that doesn't seem to matter. But it does seem to matter that he's guarding this. So maybe he wants to go here. Um, it's something to think about. Now, the queen can take this bishop. We shouldn't need to think about that very much because we could take his queen. And then we look to see, does he have any moves to threaten our queen? Does he have a way to put us in check? No, not really. So maybe he wants to go here. Don't get hung up on one idea because maybe he has no intention of doing this. What black should be doing, what might hurt you, is to get pieces out. If he can't attack your king, what, can, what else can he do? He could attack your queen here. 
Now, a good player is going to look at this and say, oh, that's not a good move. You know, and he'll tell you what white can do. However, if you're a beginner, you want to be aware of such a move. Why? Because it's almost like check. You know, you're threatening the queen and it's guarded by the knight. That's part of the um, value of noticing squares that more than one piece uh, guards because that means one piece can go there and then it's guarded by another one. It's also good to be constantly aware of what's completely unguarded. Typically the rooks for a while are completely unguarded. So black has only one piece out here in the central area. He only has one piece. So you basically, you look for a way for your opponent to clobber you. If you don't see any moves that seem dangerous against you, then the next thing you do is you say, well, what, what do I want to do? I want to get my pieces out if I'm the white pieces, but you don't just make a move. I mean, unless you're in a, a, a game, which a beginner shouldn't be, where you have no time and no increment or delay, um, but moves like moving the knight here spring to mind. That would guard the pawn so that you can move the bishop, so that you can move the pawn, so that you can move this bishop. What made me think of that? Well, I want to get the bishop out. Why? Because I want to get all my pieces out. So I want to move this bishop, but if I move the bishop, the knight can take the pawn. So this is a move that gets a new piece out. But I shouldn't just make the move. If I'm a, a beginner, I should say, okay, I look around at his pieces and see, can he capture my knight? To a somewhat more experienced player, that's a ridiculous comment. They go, well, the knight's guarded by two pawns and none of it. Yeah, but when you're first starting in chess, you, you are not used to where their pieces can see. Even a moderately experienced player automatically sees they can't put their queen here because the knight so often is on that square and the bishop very often is aimed at this. But if you were less experienced, you have to, uh, let's say you have some reason that you think you want to go there. You're looking at this pawn, but a slightly more experienced player, they go, well, the pawn's guarded anyway. And then what if I go there and they have to look around at the piece and they go, oh, the knight could take me, the bishop could take me. It takes them literally a hundred times as long as it does for just a slightly experienced player to know, I can't move my queen here. Most games are won by the opponent of the player who makes the worst move. And the good news in that is that all you have to do is just don't be the person who makes the single worst blunder of the game. Between beginners, you can be very much losing and win the game just by being careful on every move. And the best way to do that is be constantly aware of sequences of um, captures and checks, and especially any move that makes a check or a capture on the next move. So um, he goes here instead of getting the knight out. Well, at least that guards this pawn. It does open up a new line here and a new one here. So the knight is blocking the queen. If I want to anticipate, I might look ahead and go, well, what if the queen could go here right now? What would it be worth to him? Now, a slightly more experienced player is going to go, it's not worth anything to him right now because the queen is like all alone. It's not worth giving up the knight for the pawn just to do one check. Um... But even that is based on some knowledge and experience. So uh, this is not really a good move. It blocks the queen off. Uh, but it is somewhat logical because it guards this pawn. Now if this pawn goes here, he can take it for free. Oh, and he does. And he doesn't take it for free. 
If he was going to go back, he should have gone here. So this is a preposterously silly move. If you seem to be able to capture something for free, don't chicken out, don't see ghosts, as it's called. Um, don't see ghosts, don't chicken out. If you don't find a reason not to take something for free, take it, even if it's just a pawn. So if the bishop did take the pawn, here's how white should think. He'd say, well, if I take the pawn and then I were black for the rest of the game, what would I do? Like, for instance, if the bishop went here and the queen went here, then there's a checkmate threat. So what if black goes here and then his plan is to put the queen here and come here and do a checkmate? It doesn't take a lot of experience to say, well, you know, white can stop that. He can put his queen here and guard the bishop and guard against the checkmate all in one. But if you're new to chess, you have to think about things like that. The first thing you have to think about is if I take that pawn, is there a black piece who can get me right away? Rather than to give in to an immediate impulse. Most of the blunders that beginners make, they make the move in less than eight seconds. So, um, yeah, this move's not really good. He should have taken the pawn. Uh, but the whole point is, I hope that at least he thought about capturing the pawn. By the way, white in this game is a computer designed to give beginners a chance. But I'm addressing the moves of both players as if they were uh, human beginners. Okay, black does get a new piece out and he guards this pawn that wasn't guarded before. Now the queen and rook guard each other. And he makes another pawn move instead of getting pieces out, which is preposterously bad. This just doesn't make sense. Um, it's probably worth it at this point. And this is something that a stronger player will just see like automatically because they're in the habit of looking at checks and captures. Now a, a beginner would say, I can't take that pawn because I'll lose a knight for a pawn. But a slightly more experienced player will notice that there's a check over here after that. So they think knight takes the pawn, pawn takes the knight. And again, the better of a player you are, the more you will develop the ability to visualize and imagine ahead. So let's say knight takes the pawn, try to see this without making the moves. Pawn takes the knight, the queen comes over here with check, the king would be forced to go to this square and then black would have another good move. Do you see what it is? He would have a, a virtually a game winning move. Let's see if black made the right move. No, he didn't. Okay. Let's look at this. Let's say he goes here. White can't even take this. He's got a, uh, and then if he doesn't take it, the queen is going here too. I guess you have to move the, the queen here. And then when he gives check, you got to move your king in the corner. This is very bad for white already. And it makes sense because he's moving his pawns up here and he's leaving his pieces at home. So if the pawn takes, which is the first thing to think about if you don't know, is the capture. Check. Here's a check that gives him only one way to react. And then here's a capture and a check. And it's the only move on the board that check. is both. And now white is losing the queen. And I mean losing the queen totally, losing it for free. Might be worse than that. Because he can't go here for the because of the pawn. He's got to go here. And the queen can't even be saved after check. this check. That would force the king here. 
wow this is like really really bad for for white yeah you can check. check here that would force him to go here wow this is like really bad for him you can check, check him again and i didn't see this all the way through i'm looking at moves that give check uh with a speculative that means i'm just seeing if they work because i don't have to make these moves if they don't work this would force white to make one and only one move right no he could go here also but first we would think about well what if he takes the pawn And then black would Check. have this move. And yeah, that would be checkmate. So let's suppose that on this pawn check, he goes here instead so he doesn't get checkmated. Uh, yeah, you can go here, threatening to go here. If he does this, what black can take on Passant. This is another thing beginners need to be up on, is to know all of the rules. But this is not bad for the black king. Plus, if you're a beginning player, you know you're not going to see this far ahead. You just see that your king is up and brought into the center. And you should know that that's very dangerous. And even if you don't find a forced mate, your opponent might not find the forced mate either. He might just start checking you and just fall into it. Because that's how dangerous it is once the king is out there. He might have a better play than this check here maybe he should uh just go check. here check now the king's got to go here or here or here if he goes here bishop back here check check would force him here then we have check. this check which would force him to go here And we check. have this check, which would force him to just give away the pawn, which doesn't seem to be useful, so he might as well do it this way. Check. Now he's in check from the queen again. And then this castle here, with these lined up and the king in the scope of the bishop. And... For example, if the king goes here, check. check, and he's going to win the queen. And another thing is, you don't have to see a whole bunch of moves ahead. If you see you're winning a queen for a bishop or something like that, you don't have to try to see it through to mate. All right, so let's go. Now, a very strong player, like somebody like over 1,600, would probably be able to calculate that over the board in a slow game, at least to this point here. Enough to know that they, they, can't, uh, they can't take the knight with a pawn. And then if they don't, queen here check is coming because he moved these pawns. So black misses his chance. Maybe he chickened out. Now, if you're thinking about a sacrifice, if you really don't see how to make it work, I mean, you probably are better to pass it up. But that would be one of the times in the game where it's worth a lot of your time. If you're playing a 30 minutes each game, it might be, and you have 25 minutes left, it might be worth 10 minutes thinking about this. Because if it works, you're only going to have to make a few more moves, and then you're going to have very easy moves to make and not very many of them.
So he goes back. Now he's threatening still to bring his queen here. Check. Check. This is a typical beginner's mistake. Yes, you should always consider all checks and captures, but that doesn't mean all of them are good. And this one is typically and characteristically just bad because white can react by strengthening his center and producing a new threat that causes him to just waste another move. So he pin self pins his knight. At least that lets his rook out. Now, before he made this move, he should have thought about what if the bishop takes the knight. Check. Of course, the check here is, is another check. So this is an, another separate move that should have been considered. But any check or capture on every move should be under consideration. Black, before he made that move, should be aware that once the king moves, the bishop will be threatening the queen. The key to tactics is to anticipate threats, that is, to think about them before they happen. And he completely misses the fact that the queen, Black completely missed the fact that the queen is under attack. Before Black made this move, he should have thought, what move would I make if I were the white pieces right now? If you're a beginner, you must look at every single piece, especially rooks, bishops, and queens, because they typically have long lines and, and quite a number of options. If you see that you can take the queen, you should not say, Oh, well, my opponent's a good player, so probably it's a bad move. No, they should take it. And so now he, he takes it. So now white is completely winning. Now very little else that can happen in this game can make a difference now. Now white has no bad moves and black has no good moves. Because any move black makes, we, we'd have to say, well, he's completely losing anyway. Okay, so white gives, black gives up here because he loses his queen, of course. And this is how almost all games uh, are won and lost by players who are like under 800. Is, is somebody gives away a piece and the other person takes it. Uh, and then they might give away another one. Or one person gives away their queen, and then the person who takes the queen two moves later, they allow a back rank checkmate. It's just checking for these giant mistakes that are going to help you the, the most. Okay, let's look at one more game. Um, we'll look at a game by a slightly stronger uh, player. Um, all right, we'll look at the history of and okay. All right, here's a game. Okay, so if you're black, you should have a set opening that you do when white does this. Now, if you're a little bit stronger player, like maybe 14, 1600, you might have more than one reply, but you shouldn't be playing any opening on a whim saying, oh, I'll just try this, you know, if the game's important to you. Now, this is a blitz game, so, um, you know, he might play anything, but that's a perfectly good move. Okay, white makes the very familiar, I hope, threat on this unguarded pawn. 
and black guards the pawn. Okay, white plays a standard opening here. It's not so important what the name of it is, but if you're the black pieces and this opening gets played against you, you need to have decided what to do against it. Anything that happens often, you want to go back to the drawing board and say, well, what am I going to do? Okay, this is an unusual opening among very strong players, but it does guard this pawn. Beginners might think that they need to make this move because white's going to trade off the knight and win this pawn. And there's some tactics um, that experienced players know that tell us that that's not really true. Black doesn't actually have to make this move to keep the pawn guarded. In fact, the most popular move by black actually encourages white to take the knight if he's going to, a6. And knight f6 might be black's best reply to this, which appears to ignore the problem, but with a counterattack on white's pawn. However, this is not a bad move. This is called the Steinitz variation. And I don't know that because I think about it. I know that just because, you know, I read about it. Somebody told me about it. Uh, so if you're the white pieces and you haven't seen that before, you have to now start playing chess. As soon as you get to the point in the game where you don't absolutely know what to do, if it's not part of your opening preparation, the first time you have to start thinking, you should think a lot. But it has to be more general right now. White does have a move that's a capture and a check, but this piece is already out here. So in general, you want to get more pieces out. So unless you see some specific reason why this trade is good for you, don't trade. This is something that beginners do way too much of. They trade, trade, trade pieces. So did white play d4? Yeah, that's a good move. It's a move that you might play even without knowing it because it is safe. The knight can't move and it's guarded by both the knight and the queen and lets this bishop out. All right, so he takes. So now we, we, if we don't know that taking back is good, we have to be careful, but this knight's not guarding anything else except this pawn, so it would seem like it's okay to move it. Now, you could even take with the queen because the knight is, is pinned, but you have to be very careful with stuff like that if you don't know for sure. And this is actually the better move. And this is also what we would call a book move. And this is a typical beginner's, what we call it, unforced, unmotivated um, exchange. Beginners try to just trade, 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 trade pieces. Usually whoever initiates the trade had a better move. Better for white might be to get this knight out or get this bishop out. Now, I know that knight c3 is a book move because of my knowledge, but if I were a much lower rated player and I didn't have knowledge of this, I would want to get more pieces out anyway. So I would think about, well, what if I move the bishop here? What moves do I need to think about? Well, the bishop could go here and threaten my queen, but then I think I could just take the bishop for free. And I would think about that and I go, yeah, yeah, it's free. He could attack my queen, but the queen's not trapped out here. So I just get a bishop for free. So he wouldn't do that if I moved the bishop here. Uh, he could also take my knight. He doesn't have any moves that put me in check. He had one move that threatens my queen. Um, if he moves this pawn up, He's threatening my pawn, but that doesn't seem very logical either. So I think about, well, if I move the bishop here and he takes my knight. Now, if I just take back, he takes my bishop. So what do I do if he takes the knight? If I get this piece out, 
and he takes my knight, uh, then I can take his bishop. The greater force, I'm attacking his king. It's a check. It's a capture and a check. So I should think about that before I think about just taking back. So if I move the bishop here, he goes knight takes knight. I go bishop takes bishop check. He might take with his queen. And then I take back here. And if I can see that far ahead, I might look to see if there's any more checks or captures. But I don't. So this move might be safe, but do I just make the move immediately? Well, maybe if I'm in a blitz game running out of time, but if I'm in a slow game, I might say, okay, well, is there any other move worth thinking about? Whenever you have plenty of time, that's, that's a good thought to include, is do I have anything else that might make sense? Yeah, maybe moving this knight out. And then whichever one you make here, at least you're developing a piece. Because we can't know all the openings. Even, again, as I said, masters don't know all the openings. So let's see what he did. Yeah, he just traded here. And now, now he's got to make another move with a piece that's already out instead of getting new pieces out. And now that it's Black's turn... Black has more pieces off the back row than white does. All right, so he he castles. This is one of the three things to do in the opening, is to make a pawn center, move one or two center pawns two squares forward, let both of your bishops out, Try to get all four minor pieces out, both knights and both bishops. Get at least two of them out in castle, two or three out in castle. Don't make a bunch of pawn moves. Don't trade every time you get a chance. And don't make any moves except for moves that you know ahead of time, like opening moves. Don't make a move in less than eight seconds unless you have to because you're running out of time. When you see a move, look and see if there's a better move. And before you decide that you're going to play it, consider it. Try to figure out how it might be a bad move. And then if it is going to be a bad move, have another move that you're going to think about in the event that it turns out to be a bad move. Like, for example, if I'm black here, the first thing I should think about is, if I were white, what would I do? Look at the king. Are there any moves to put black in check? No. Can I threaten the black queen right now? Well, this bishop going here doesn't really threaten the queen. The knight's in the way. If I move the pawn up, I'm threatening to take his knight. And I unblock the bishop, which doesn't really seem to have any new threats. So what could he do? He could just take my pawn for free. Any problem with that? Not really. I can't put him in check after that. So this doesn't seem like anything. If I'm the black pieces, I go, well, that's nothing I have to worry about. So then I just look at where is he going to put his pieces? He'll probably put this here, or at least he should. That's his better move. He might pin my knight here. And then I might think, oh, how could that become a problem? Uh, maybe he puts the bishop here and then puts this pawn here and then moves this pawn up to threaten the knight, hoping the knight will move and get the queen. But if it doesn't, pawn takes, pawn takes. And, and already this idea comes in part from experience because maybe you've seen where you pinned a knight before and then you attack it with a pawn. And since you can't go here, the idea of bringing this one to guard this square comes from experience as well, but not, not much experience. Uh, but you might think of a plan like that. But if I'm the black pieces, I go, well, if I put my bishop here, all of that doesn't work anyway, and I already won a castle. So if this turned out to be a bad move, what other move is there to think about? You know, I can't take here 
I might go, okay, is this a good move? It does create a threat. Pawn and knight are both attacking this. Um, but then he could just move forward. So that might be, but if you, if the bishop goes here, this move will be even better anyway. So yeah, probably bishop e7 is a good move. And that's what he did. He's not a very high ranked player here. White should get a new piece out every time it's your move. Now white should start off by thinking if I were black and it were black's move, what could black do? And you look at checks and captures. Now we keep looking at this on every move, so we have to be aware of what's different now. Well, black has got an even safer king now, and you're not going to pin the knight with the rook either. Um, so taking that pawn is, is it's not something that black is going to do. It's nothing I have to worry about. He could attack my queen and his, with his bishop, and it would be guarded by the knight. But then white can just move this pawn up and threaten the bishop. And there's no move that gives check there or anything. So uh, that doesn't seem very useful for black. So I don't think I have any way that black is about to clobber me on the very next move. So then I just go back to my plan, which is what? to develop my pieces. What's that mean? Get my knights and bishops, minor pieces first, off the back row. So a move like knight c3, bishop here, or bishop here, any of those might be good. All right, well, at least he got a piece off the back row and it's guarding this center pawn. So he castles. So then he goes here. When you move a piece to a square, there ought to be a plan behind it. Like, what is the plan behind this? The knight's not going to go here. He's not going to go here. If he goes here, what can he do except just come back to here or come back where he came from? So um, there's, there's not a whole lot of sense. It took two moves for the knight to get here. He could have gotten to here in just one move. And if you go there, you have to see if this causes a problem for you because it does threaten the knight. So you have to think, what if he goes here? I can threaten his knight or I can take. When you have a way to complicate and, this, and a straightforward way to play, think of the straightforward way first, uh, but make sure you go back and look at the other way to see if it's good for you. Um, but white before he made this move he should have thought about uh, this pawn coming up and then he should think okay what if white goes here and he should also think what if white takes the pawn that what if I take back then the knight is still under threat uh, then he doesn't have a way to attack the queen doesn't have a way to attack the rooks most importantly, there's there's not a way to, there is a check here and it's a capture and a check. Bishop takes this pawn. Um, and if the knight has moved, the queen could go here and give another check, but even then it, it wouldn't be useful for white because the king could just go back. And one piece alone doesn't make an attack, even if it's the queen. So if this goes up here, it does get out of the way of the bishop. But taking with the pawn seems to be white's best move. And then even if black takes back, he'll have to move this knight again. So the best he could hope for is to maybe trade the knight for a bishop, but he's spending a lot of moves to do that. Um, this doesn't seem like a promising move for, for white, but at least it doesn't give away a piece. So if this is the worst mistake that white makes, he's gonna beat his 1200 rated opponent. Okay, he's getting another piece ready to attack the center, that makes sense. So white guards it, that also seems to make sense. And now he's, 
getting white to trade this pawn for this doubled pawn. And this move does make sense because at least he's guarding the pawn again. Now it was already double guarded, but the knight needed to move or else the pawn could get it. And now he opens up another threat to the pawn and he has another move that's a capture and a check. And if the king goes here, here's a knight move and that would unleash the queen. So this is a way to think about stuff before it becomes a problem is you imagine your opponent like if they had two or three moves in a row. Like if black can move twice in a row here, he might move the knight here and then move his queen here. So then you imagine that those two pieces are already there and it's your move. And you say, well, is this a problem? Yeah, it is. But he can't make two moves in a row. So what do I need to do to stop that from happening? Um, maybe I just take this pawn and then on my next move, I move my knight here. So if I take the pawn, I have to think about what if he goes here and puts me in check. And if I'm to think about taking, I have to look at this move because it's check. It also unblocks another piece. Any move that unblocks another piece uh, might have some more poison to it. So with this move, white has some stuff to think about. He might decide that he has to just give away the pawn, which is now three times attack by pawn, knight, and rook. So he takes. And black should have considered taking this. Not we, We're not really concerned with whether it's a good move or not yet. The thing is, is about how to think. And most of tactical thinking is about avoiding blunders, not making a brilliant move, but avoiding uh, making the worst move of the game. So we want to always be aware of checks, captures, and threats. Before you make a move, try to check it for problems. Okay, this is good because it guards this square. It also guards this square. And it lets this bishop out. So this bishop might go here and pin the knight. Okay, now the white knight is pinned. So I think black's threat is to take here with check. And then the queen would have to go here because if he takes with a knight, the bishop would get the queen. So if he takes with the queen, then he could double these pawns and open up the king if he wanted to. Um, yeah, this is... Um, not bad for black because he's got a lot of pieces coming over to the king side. Okay, white gets another piece into action and covers up his rook so that that's not a possibility. Now the rooks are guarding each other and he guards his bishop. See, before black makes this move, he has to look at white's pieces and see, can white capture his queen? Is this check and capture good? Not really. Um, now when white goes here, he should, he should try to see if this sacrifice is good. Like take the pawn, the pawn takes the bishop, then the queen takes the pawn. Because next he could move the knight here. Right, and then go down here with his bishop with a check. Um, and that could become dangerous. So when you make a move like this, where he can give up a minor piece for the two pawns protecting your, your king, especially if he has a couple of minor pieces to help the queen, uh, it could become dangerous. So you want to try to think about that before it happens. This allows the queen to come up here. So I think that just made things pretty safe 
for the white pieces. Now both sides have a queen and two rooks and two minor pieces. So ask yourself, who wants an end game here? Is there one side that wants to trade queens? Now this is a judgment thing and that does require experience and a stronger player. Um, but you can go by how many pieces you have near your king. White has both bishops guarding these squares over here where black pieces might want to land to come attack the king. He's also got a, an escape square in the event of a back rank mate. Uh, his queen is over here helping to guard this. And there is no white squared bishop for black anymore. And he also has his rooks connected. White has a, a fine pawn structure. So when we assess the position, uh, we know what we ought to do. Now, if you walked away from this position and just a few moves later, white had won by a checkmate. Can you imagine how it might have occurred? Even if it requires one side to make mistaken moves, which it obviously would. Or let's say, let's say that uh, you walk away from the board and just 30 seconds later, white is resigning. Maybe it's because he moved the knight and then he took this pawn because he constantly be aware of where things are unguarded. Like if any of my pieces were to take this pawn, even if it's not guarded, for now they would be unguarded. And a piece that gives check or can give check, it's as if you can see through it. So if you're willing to give away this bishop to be able to move this way, then you would. So if this knight weren't guarding the pawn, white still can't take it because of this check here. Now, even, the, no, even though the knight is taking the pawn here, if you're the white pieces, you should be making a mental note of that. Notice which pieces can give check because that's where you may make a blunder. So... Black goes here, and the queen cannot take this pawn right now. Uh, it's on a different color than the king, so there's no check that it can give. However, if it moves out of the way, it may end up revealing a, a possibility of a checkmate because this square is guarded by the enemy. And before black went there, he should have considered, well, what happens if white takes with the bishop? Um, you probably don't need to think about what if he takes with the queen all that much. Um, and then are there any other ways to threaten? Yeah, this bishop could go here and threaten the black queen, but then the queen could just take it for free, and that doesn't seem to be useful for white. So we don't have to spend much time thinking about that. If white moves this pawn up here, he's threatening to take this pawn, and if the black pawn takes, that would leave his knight unguarded. So before this knight went here, that's another move that black should have thought about just to make sure it's okay. Okay, and now there is a blunder that black could make. If black were to move this knight without going here, then maybe the queen would take here with check the king would move over, he would check, the king would go here, maybe this bishop would go here with a check. A move like this is tempting. However, that pawn where it was used to guard this square and this square. So now, black has uh, weak black squares. That means that we can put our pieces on those squares and maybe threaten to put the queen here. Now that's something that we might know from experience by having seen that type of a checkmate before. Like with the queen sitting on one of these two squares and the bishop on the other one. Right now the knight guards this square. Oh and look there's the very the very blunder that we talked about. 
So now you should see what black can do. And probably white sees it already. He was focusing on this knight when he did it. He wanted the knight to move so that he could maybe get a, these squares. But he forgot to say, well, what if I go here? And the first thing you look for are checks and captures. This bishop check allows black to capture the white queen on the very next move. Check. And he saw it. And then so this is, again, we see the same thing happening in, in every game, that things are kind of equal until one person completely blunders. Even when somebody very badly misplays the opening, so just avoiding the blunder every time it's your move. First, look for a move for your opponent as if you were going to lose your move. And if you don't see any threats, imagine that your opponent gets to make two or even three moves in a row. See how they might generate a threat. Try to find blunders on both sides well in advance, like we did in this game. We said if this was ever unguarded by the knight and white took it, there's this check here. Sure enough, that's what happened. So I hope this teaches us how, at least at a beginning level, how to think in chess. You look first for the immediate stuff, the stuff that's right now, the immediate threat. And then you, you try to say, okay, if there is no immediate threat, if my opponent is not about to clobber me on the next move or soon, then do I have a way to clobber them? And if not, then you just try to make your pieces more active and to increase your advantages and decrease your disadvantages and follow your general strategy. So, um, if you want to learn more in person, hollywoodchesstutoring.com and I'll see you in the next video.